hopping back and forth. I'm sure. Oh, okay. Brim, can you just tell us who's in the room there? Yes, I can. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Lindsay Wells. I'm the marijuana program administrator for the marijuana right. registry. Thank you. Yeah, we got another one. Okay. Can we go around the room? Yes, let's go. Okay. Let's go around the room because. Hmm? Okay, sure. Uh, my name is Matt Myers. I'm the new director of prevention services at the Vermont Department of Health, standing in uh, today and I guess in the future for a while uh, for uh, Mark Levine and Dr. Levine. Okay. I'm sorry, so you're here as a representative for Dr. Levine? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any other? Members of the public in the room? Yes, right. we do have two members of the public um, and myself. Great, thank you. So, Doctor, do you want to call the order and just take a quick uh, roll? Uh, sure. It, can I, I, I? I'll call the meeting to order, and then uh, should we just all call off for roll? Sure. I, I can just say. Uh, um, Dr. Clifton present, uh, Mangelia present, Jim Romanoff present, uh, Chairman James Prepper and Bryn Hare present, uh, and I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot, I, I didn't write down your name, sir, for, for Dr. Levine. Oh, yeah, uh, Matt Myers, M Y E R S. Did you know the gentleman's name in the room? Yes, sorry, his name is Matt Myers. Matt Myers, on behalf of Dr. Levine. Yes. And, okay, we've got a form, we're, we're ready to go. Okay, all right. Well, thanks so much for, uh, for coming today. Uh, let me actually pull up the agenda. I accidentally uh, uh, took the agenda down. And uh, apologies for um, putting uh, for putting that SOW on there. We were talking about just uh, something that had to be done apparently with us uh, rather than <coughs> with the uh, entire committee. So I, so I, I wanted to, uh, let's see, go back to the um, agenda and just make sure that, we had, that we've, uh, uh, covered everything. Um, oh, I suppose our first step is the approval of the minutes. Uh, has everybody gotten a chance? And I apologize for not sending the minutes. Has every uh, until late? That'll uh, hopefully be the last time that I do that. Has everybody gotten a chance to approve them? Yeah. Okay, or, or look at them. And uh, I guess can somebody uh, motion to approve and second the motion? Yeah, I'll do a motion to uh, approve the minutes for last Thursday's meeting. Okay. Second. Okay, terrific. That's our first step in our agenda. And then the SOW, as I said, was more of an internal issue. And then uh, uh, we're back to these um, to the uh, list of questions about uh, about the possession and home grow that we were uh, that we were kind of, that we were moving around on. I think we ended up on a possession of three ounces when you're outside of your house. That that would be you know probably most consistent with what the adult use market is doing, mirroring the adult use market and allowing people to get enough medication so that they can move from the dispensary to their home. And so we can probably put the, uh, that, that particular issue behind us. Possession? Okay. And the other, um, the, the other issue was uh, this caregiver status and home grow status. And I think we needed to spend a bit more time on that. I know the last time we talked, we were, you know, um, worrying about caregivers versus growers. But then uh, uh, the um, guest uh, person from the public that was here, Mr. Uh, Pascarelli from the Vermont Growers, pointed out that if we change caregivers to growers, it'll take uh, a grower somebody representing that part of the industry out of a particular subcommittee. So we probably don't want to impact the, the names of those too much in, because we certainly want our, our growers represented. Um, Mary, if I could just jump in for one sec. 
So mm -hmm. currently, there are no growers represented on the oversight committee uh, for the medical cannabis program. The, we are about to make recommendations uh, for uh, the Cannabis Control Board to uh, ask the legislature to set up a new oversight committee for the future. And as I mentioned last week, we, so the issue separately, we're split on recommending that a, a small cultivator or a cultivator be on the committee. I, I supported it. Um, we might revisit the issue tomorrow when we meet, but you know the question there and the logic was that you know uh, cannabis uh, is a plant-based medicine, and the growers uh, at this point often have as much information or more than anybody because uh, we don't have a lot of uh, uh, studies and science-based information. It's coming in faster and faster, but a, a, a lot of times at this point, information about types of plants, uh, you know, cultivars and uh, whatnot is affecting the growth. The issue separately was that caregivers and growers are called the same thing in the current law. And you are able to assign a caregiver to grow your cannabis for you if you can't do it yourself. And that could be in the current understanding a, a parent, a guardian, or an assigned caregiver, a nurse, or anybody who's assigned. And at this point, people are interested right now, the law says that you can have one yeah. caregiver under the medical cannabis card that you get. And so the intention of changing the definition is not so that uh, the person in question doesn't have the care they need. In fact, we want to increase caregivers because a caregiver should be somebody, you know, the vibe is taking care of a medical patient. And the idea of separating out a grower, which is not to say that you couldn't still ask your, instead of yourself, you know, your, your parent, guardian, caregiver to be your grower, but separately address small growers growing for medical patients. And I just wanted to put that out there again that, you know, the question really is we want to make sure that a medical patient can have more than one caregiver so that several people can administer the medicine or possess the medicine or pick it up. And it's just, it seems confusing to, in reverse, say a grower can grow for, you know, 10 people or a caregiver can take care of 10 people. It's about the patient and how many caregivers they, they should have and could have. So does that make it yeah. more clear? Well, it's about the patient in both directions as I see it because if a patient needs five caregivers to provide them uh, for an adequate amount of cannabis, that's fine. And if we have a grower who can provide for five patients, then that is fine too. If they're, if, you know, I think a separate subcommittee is you know, determining the uh, the amount of uh, lab testing that has to be done for for these small growers, but um, but I mean, it strikes me as a perfect way to keep the cannabis industry local and uh, and keep the money from the cannabis industry local, you know, and in Vermont and supporting small businesses, which we which we you know, no, will consistently keep the money in the community better than working with large multinational companies. So, so I agree with you, like five caregivers per, um, per person, and then, you know, each grower growing for as many as five, maybe we would even want to go higher so that a grower could, uh, you know, be allowed to provide for, uh, you know, for an adequate number of people to also make the grow reasonable with the expenses and the baseline expenses that are incurred. I mean, I, if I may jump in here, it sounds like that's a small grower, not a caregiver. Um, and I think once again, we circle back to the concerns of safety for patients. Um, if these caregivers are allowed to grow for multiple patients but are not regulated as any tier of grower, you know, who's there to enforce what type of lab uh, testing is required, patient safety components. I just, I think that's 
pretty concerning. I also, I think that's slightly different than what Jim's suggesting. Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. That is different. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. I mean, I think that this. uh, I'm suggesting, you know, multiple caregivers, not growers. Right. That a patient can sign, assign one grower if they want. Just Uh like I can ask my wife to grow for me as a private individual. But if growers want to grow for multiple patients, to me, that should be, you know, a cultivation and a cultivation licensing issue rather than confusing it and and labeling that caregivers as well. Because that's been the big debate on the oversight committee is that, you know, uh, one of our members who's a medical doctor wants to know that, you know, the, the caregiver is is defined in a way that uh, has to do with the health care and medical care rather than medicine making. And that right. that's a separate function. So, so where we at last time, Dr. Wu, was, was exactly here. We, we were in agreement and consensus on more than one caregiver on, on as far as medically providing, not on, on the grower side. So don't don't. Right. Okay. So I'm That's in correct. agreement on more than one caregiver, but I think I want to expend a little bit more time exploring how many people a grower can grow for. Because if a grower can, in fact, grow for up to five people, then they could keep the costs down for those five people if they were unable to go to a dispensary. And they could also run all of the necessary appropriate labs, you know. I think that the labs in Vermont, uh, you know, have had, or the lab testing in Vermont has been lagging behind a little bit at the dispensaries, from what I understand with digging in a bit this week also. Uh, uh, understood, but, but before I let you go off too far, but what, what um, Jim was also suggesting is the grow side is maybe, probably, uh, I think I agree with him, better left to the, to the other subcommittee on, on cultivation, not for medical. Yeah, I think that's more. If you want to maybe dive into that that topic, that's more of a cultivation issue than it is a medical. I feel like it's really a medical issue because if we don't make sure that patients have access to the medicine, then you know, then then they won't have access to the medicine. If they can't afford to go to the dispensary, and we don't protect home grow in this subcommittee, then you know, I can't be sure that cultivation is going to protect home grow. I, I'm, but and I'm concerned about home I'm just, grow. Yeah, now you're getting on home grow. Say, I don't think it's the, the job of this committee to protect home grow. I think it's the job of this subcommittee to consider medical patients and their safety. So I would agree with Tom that that is for a separate subcommittee, not ours. Um, I think where we landed last time was still the one grower per patient. Um, and then adding right, a right. medical caregiver, but not an additional grower. I don't There's a agree. That that is what I remember, Meg, as well. And you know, again, just to quickly say that what we're looking at is being able to have multiple caregivers, a patient assign someone to grow for them, not change current home grow which allows, in fact, we want to increase the amount right. of plants that you can grow, definitely. You can mm-hmm. ask someone else to do it. And if the cultivating subcommittee wants, and I hope they have encourage them, to set up something where small growers can work directly uh, with a medical patient in one way or an individual, but certainly a medical patient, I think that's a great idea. Just what if the medical the patient, water. let me just suggest, what if the medical patient has more than one condition and the one grower doesn't grow all of the different products that that medical patient wants? Or what if the dispensary that the medical patient is assigned to has not been doing testing or has mold in their growth facilities and isn't following their own safety protocols? I mean, there's all of those issues too. Can we have I, a question in the audience. Me, thank you. Um, I was wondering, sounds like you're thinking of creating a separate category for these folks um, and separating them from what has been sort of the concept around a caregiver, um, the loved one, just because most of them fall in that category. Maybe um, 
Is that Lindsay? Lindsay? Yeah. That's Hi. Lindsay. Oh, okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I knew who was talking. Yeah, it's me. Um, one thing that's missing in the new statute is like a definition of a caregiver. Um, so maybe starting with think about how to define that, and then there, you guys are talking about a different defined category of these growers, and if that you want to send that to cultivation or marketing licensing or whatever for them to sort of just handle yeah. how what to do with folks who want to grow for medical patients and what that'll look like and the other issues related to that category. Yeah, I agree. I think that's so far what Jim and Tom and I have said is that we need, that's not our subcommittee. I mean, we have not heard from any patients that this is, um, you know, something they want. We've heard only so far from the Vermont Growers Association, I believe, that this is um, one of their priorities. And ultimately, I think last time we discussed um, having, you know, one caregiver growing for multiple patients could be a safety risk. I Why could that be a safety risk? Matt? Well, because caregivers are not subject to the um, lab testing and regulations that the dispensaries are. Right, so, the dispensaries and why it should be lab testing. I'm sorry, I couldn't, I think two people were speaking. Are the dispensaries doing lab testing? Yeah. Are they transparent with their lab testing? Yep. Yeah, so if patients can go into the dispensaries and request any um, certificate of analysis for any of the products offered. Okay. I mean, it's not in this subcommittee's jurisdiction, as I understand it, to worry about the lab testing. I mean, my concern in this subcommittee is patients and, mm -hmm. and patients getting access to the medicine. And my concern is if you only allow one grower for one patient and that grower has crop failure or that grower or that patient requires more than one medicine, then that patient is just out. But if a grower or they isn't have the money to be able to go to a dispensary. But if there's a different I'm category sorry. for these growers, then they wouldn't be subject to the one caregiver to patient ratio. That's right. If you carve Correct. that out. So that would be a non issue. Correct. And that would be up right. to licensing right. or the lab section, right? Right. Okay. okay. So for a yes. patient, for example, who has seizures or who has multiple conditions and maybe needs two or three growers, how is that patient protected so that they can get their medicine at, at an affordable price? Well, right. I guess the question is, how would you determine that a patient with multiple conditions needs multiple growers? You know, when, who is it to say that one grower can't supply one patient with what well, they need. Well, who is it to say that one grower can? Let's just theoretically well, imagine that it. there might be one patient in Vermont that can't get their medicine with one grower and that can't afford to go to the dispensary. What is that one patient to do? I don't think that's a real hypothetical because any grower who is a professional grower, I don't assume that's what we're talking about here, is somebody who should be able to grow the same strain. That's the only power the grower has, to pick a plant, a clone, a seed, and grow it. The other powers lie within the hands of the processors and the retail market and the dispensaries to process the medicine. And it's more likely that what a patient needs is a concentrate that a grower is not responsible for, but it's going to be a, a, a processor. So I don't think it would it would happen that you would have a grower who's going to say, well, I can grow that strain, but not that, uh, in a in an open market. So I don't think the a patient won't be protected that way. Uh, I think where they won't be protected is if there's not a marketplace that will do processing and you know manufacturing. And at this point, that is the dispensaries. Uh, so I don't think the growing the current the current statute protects the patient uh, in terms of their supply, if it's a homegrown supply. And if they ask their uh, caregiver to grow for them, right now, they can have one caregiver like anybody grow for them. And 
all we're saying is we don't want to muddy the term caregiver. We want to have multiple caregivers medically and healthcare wise take care of a patient. But that's because that's what caregivers do. Growers grow. We'd like the cultivation people to look at the growers and say, hey, if you guys want to grow for one patient or grow for five patients, you know, let's work out the, the structure and the you know way we can test and monitor and do all that stuff. But I don't see why we would put it into, it, it, it's not going to protect the medical patient. It's actually going to harm them or risk put risk to them to put it into the medical law because all it does is muddy the term caregiver. Caregiver is the person taking, you know, rather than the medicine person. And, and I think that's really the issue. I just want to try to design a system here that is different from, you know, the Michigan system and the North and the, and the New York system where all of the medical patients or the Iowa system where patients come to me to get a card and I don't do a ton of cards, but they come to me to get a card all the time. And then they say, you know, the dispensaries are too expensive. And so I just get it off of a secondary market and I, but I, but I need a card to protect myself. You know, I mean, it, it, in a lot of cases, a decentralized patient centered model with multiple growers available per patient is going to really optimize the availability of the product at the lowest price for the patient and also keep the money with Vermont, small Vermont growers, which is what Vermont is all about. It's all about these small businesses. You know, as I understand it, the patient dispensaries, the medical dispensaries are all multi or multi-state organizations, you know, owned outside of Vermont. And none of that money is going to be maintained in Vermont. As I understand it, I don't think that there's any focus on patient care. I'm not aware that they're doing any particular education. So there's really no caretaking role being done in the dispensaries. And I don't think that the workers are particularly trained to where they have a, you know, I mean, I hired a gal to help me with my email marketing portion of my company, and I've been training her for almost a year now. I, I, my impression is when you're training people for a dispensary job, it's, you know, a couple hours of training, mostly on the business side. It's, so, I, I so I'm just not sure that the dispensaries are the best answer for most patients. So I want to make sure that most patients have good access to, you know, small cultivators where they can get their products. So if I may jump in here, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure about the amount of training in other states. My understanding is that there are generally statewide programs that employees have to go through. But I know I can speak for the dispensaries here that it's not just a couple of hours of training on the business side. Um, you know, employees usually go through a, essentially a two-week training program with a lot of observation, learning about products, and all of that. Um, on the other hand, I think you know a lot of what you're saying, despite the fact that the dispensaries in Vermont are in alignment with multi-state operators, their commitment is to the medical program here. Um, and I think last time it was requested that we get someone in here from the dispensaries to speak. So I would ask that um, we invite someone from the dispensaries to speak to us on Thursday, because I think they could address a lot of your concerns. Yeah, I was going to also ask that we have somebody from Washington or Hawaii, Washington State or Hawaii with with a patient-centered decentralized process in place that's been very successful that the medical patients are using so that we can also talk with them about what they're, what they're doing. Um, I thought that you guys were both, I mean, Jim, you're a patient representative from the same dispensary that Megan is employed by, right? Well, <laughs> I don't consider myself a patient representative. I've been on the committee for five years, and I was my name was given to DPS by them, and we've never talked since then about it. And there is no definition of what each member and, and uh, person does on the committee. I'm the chairman right now. I You're appointed the by committee. the medical dispensary yeah. that Megan works for. You're appointed by that dispensary? Uh, I think each dispensary I, I appoints that dispensary, and they 
did give my name, and you can say they appointed me, but there is no relationship or coordination with them. And, and on top of that, I'm the chairman of, of the Oversight Committee. I speak right. for the Oversight Committee and represent that. Now, that's my fiduciary responsibility and, uh, and that, this year. And to clarify, I am, yes, employed by Series Med, but I am also employed by Vermont Cannabis Trade Association for the three dispensaries, and they are separate roles. To, 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 uh, doctor, to, to put um, a bigger picture, just get the broader picture, what we were talking about the, the first meeting was to ensure access um, mm -hmm. to the patients. And that's why, uh, you know, I want to make sure we dedicate some time to the concept of what we talked about the first time, developing that baseline of, of products um, that we can ensure that from happening. But I mean, the, the other thing that will be happening here is as adult use also comes onto the line and we have more cultivators, uh, it is going to be dominated by by the small cultivator market. Um, that's just the way Vermont is, is comprised, right? And so there's going to be a transformation um, and there's going to be access to, to small cultivators. Uh, they're looking at that in a separate subcommittee about what that market looks like. And then in another subcommittee, we're looking at cultivation. And so that's why we're saying when you're talking about growers and giving access um, to the medical patients, that's what those other subcommittees are, are dealing with. And I don't think anyone on this committee can say determinatively uh, it's going to stay one-on-one -on -one, um, with a grower or medical patient, uh, or, or it's not. But I, I think you got to take those other factors into consideration because it's going to be a different, it's going to be a different marketplace. And you, we can't operate under the assumption here that the medical supply is just going to come from the existing MSOs. I highly doubt that that it will. Okay. That make sense. Yes. Yeah. And so that's why when again to get, to get back to our our baseline question here was the let, let's identify the problem the problem is the definition of caregiver is one one to one i think we're all in agreement it should not be that way um it should be expanded for caregivers as far as the definition of a medical care provider is going and as lindsay uh correctly articulated, what we need to do is leave the definition of the grower. Um, that needs to be, I think what we're saying, that needs to be a separate category, but not necessarily defined by by the members of the subcommittee in this medical subcommittee advisory group. I mean, my concern is that the needs of the patients or the, the concerns of the patients are not being properly addressed by this committee. You know, I wonder if we could do a couple of things with that. I'd like to attend the Wednesday subcommittee with you, Jim, and just uh, and just listen sure. to the patients with you. And then I wonder if we could open up guests so that they don't, since everybody else here is virtual, could we allow virtual guests in this subcommittee also so that if people are unable to travel to be present, they can yeah. they can also present virtually? We, that, that, the, the opportunity for public comment is multiple avenues, but virtual appearance is, is not is not one of them. Um, is there some the, reason for that decision? Do we know why we came to that decision? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't yeah, know. Because I'm here virtually, so I just need to get an understanding. I can address it. I, you know, this is James Pepper, the chair of the cannabis board. We have a staff. Very, that stretch very thin, just as NACB is stretched pretty thin, and by this process, and we have about 30 to 40 people that join every single one of our calls. And we just don't have the time or the resources to manage the kind of flow in and out of of participants. Um, we are complying with the open meeting laws, and we are having uh, people. We have a physical location with members of the public. Um, you know, Jeffrey Pizzatullo has attended um, on behalf of uh, the caregivers, and um, we, we really just don't have the resources to manage uh, the process of kind of, you know, inviting anyone to participate in these. Uh, it wouldn't be just limited to Vermont, of course. And, uh, you know, we, what we do as a board 
is we record these and we um, post them to our website and have people come and con and we have a weekly wrap up meeting where all the board talks about what happened in these meetings and allows people of the public, including patients, caregivers, anyone involved in the medical program, to comment at that virtually. And, and there's there's also obviously the written comments that anyone can can submit, although we haven't had that many on, to the medical subcommittee yet. But okay, okay, Dr. Clifton, you know. I, if you don't mind me stepping in, I know this is not my subcommittee. Um, like this is part of the no. advisory committee. Yeah. Um, I actually think that uh, we are all on the same page. We just don't know how to kind of get to where where we're going, which is that we want um, we want folks to be able to access their medicine, and we want people to uh, feel confident that that medicine is of the highest clean quality. And I think that the question is, is if you're gonna expand the patient to caregiver, and I'm not gonna use that term caregiver because it seems to be confusing, the patient to designated grower um, uh, ratio, then how do you ensure that the products that those people are growing are quality products? And I think what Jim and Meg are saying is, well, push them to the kind of cultivation license because there will be Lots of rules and regulations around that, which don't currently exist for caregivers in the medical side. So that, to me, the question is, okay, well, what rules and regulations, if we were gonna expand that ratio, what rules and regulations do we need for designated growers to ensure that they're providing their patients a clean product? Yes. Yes, I mean, I think that, I think that, you know, we should make sure that there is some testing, you know, if, I mean, and, and make that testing available, potentially subsidized uh, with uh, maybe with the money in that uh, in that in that uh, one particular fund, uh, the uh, the medical marijuana fund or something, but make it possible. Yeah. For growers to be tested on at whatever at whatever uh, frequency you would you would determine. I think that that recommendation makes a lot of sense to me is that, you know, I, I think there should be subsidized testing for the medical program. Um, but um, yeah, I think to me that's where this kind of, the, the linchpin of this conversation is. Um, but uh, I could be wrong and I hate to kind of interrupt the flow of the conversation. No, no, I really appreciate you coming in. I just wanna make sure that for patients, you know, with these disabled, you know, um, patients that are you know, probably at or near the poverty level, these grows really represent the only way that they'll be able to get their medicine. And I, I, and I want to stand with those people, you know? You know, I, I understand what you're saying, Dr. Clifton. I appreciate you clarifying, uh, Chairman Pepper, this. You know, we, we do have uh, uh, members of the public coming and giving testimony uh, to the effect that, you know, these, the kind of idea you're talking about would be good, but I have to say, because, and this is not gonna make me popular, but just because we have testimony doesn't mean it's the case for all of the patients. We don't have data that says how, you know, most patients are uh, coping with what the cost of medical cannabis is. We can assume everybody thinks it's high and that a, a adult use market is gonna affect that. But what I would hate to see happen and this is for the patients, this is as a chairman of the oversight committee of the medical program, is to take a part of the law that exists now that clearly is very confusing. We're all confused about it, about this term caregiver in relation to a designated grower and make it worse. We can maybe envision a whole new law. I think, you know, we don't know what the case will be, whether the dispensaries as they exist now will be a viable business and they'll want to continue it, I don't know. We, we do need to look outside the box and we, we do need to look at new ways to make sure that the medical patients get the best product and best treatment. But when, at, at uh, a cost that is going off, to be paid. Yeah, best cost and best treatment at, at good price. And it's, that is it's not going to ensure it by taking the law that right. exists now and muddying it more. It would ensure it by putting it through all the levers and channels that we're setting up in the state 
like growers and cultivators being under growing and cultivating, those are the experts, and caregiving and medicine being under healthcare and wellness people. And yeah, I think that's, that's the main thing growth. we're asking. Small grows and home grows really fall under medicinal though, because they're because small grows and home grows are designed to support the sick and the disabled and the poor that can't go to a dispensary. So we really do in this committee, in my opinion, have to take some time to make sure that we protect those things for our patients. I'm not here to protect anybody but the patient. And I would agree. Like you're protecting the growers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I think. But, uh, it, well, I mean, the, because I mean, a patient the who's got, a, a, you know, a patient who has got yeah. all the resources is not going to have an issue with going to a dispensary. But a lot of patients, as I've repeatedly said, are disabled and low mobility and low income capability, and they're poor, and they can't go to dispensary necessarily. Utilize the dispensaries. We, we do know. That we know that the majority of patients in the programs utilize the dispensaries and the dispensaries have every intention of maintaining the medical dispensaries that, that is at their roots they you know don't want patients to have to wait in lines they want patients to have lower cost etc mm -hmm. and in the but uh, there's for profit organization so, men excuse me i mean they're a for-profit organization right so yes, they are originally they were nonprofit and because federally we were not able to be recognized as nonprofits, just operationally you can't continue like that, just financially it wasn't viable. Well, so through a series of lobbying that you were able to move from okay. non profit to profit. <laughs> okay. I, I no. think <laughs> so, Okay, all right. We're we're not we're not debating um, the MSOs versus the small growers and home growers in, in, in this committee. I'm, I'm just not going to let that continue. We, we, okay. We've got too much to do. I, I think everyone understands everyone's viewpoint on it. Um, but let's just try and let's focus <laughs> again. Okay. The, the, sure. the stop talking for, for, for the agenda is caregiver. Do we, and I think we had an agreement last time, so I'm not. I mean, it, it, it's important to revisit this, but let's just hammer down what we can. Um, the, the current definition of caregiver, uh, one to one, is inadequate, and we have consensus that that should be multiple as far as it is concerned medically. Yes. Okay, yes. And, and Dr. Clifton, you agree with that as well? Yes. Okay, um, and then here's here's where we're, we're taking a jump to but as far as as growers are concerned and whether or not we dedicate that to a separate subcommittee dr clifton that's where you say no we should tackle that here and everyone else is saying that belongs with with cultivation and, and, and market and licensing i do think we have to make sure that we protect our least protected people i mean that's what we're here to do as a medical subcommittee i think it would at least be reasonable to have some experts from you know uh, patient-centered programs in other parts of the country come to the thursday meeting and maybe present about how they work with you know, uh, with home grow and small growers and all of the definitions of all of those different people, how many plants and everything, maybe they could give us a bit more advisement on how to put together a super successful patient-centered program. I mean, is that reasonable? Does that seem like something that we could do? I would just say uh, that I am okay if if the committee is, I am okay with allowing witnesses that we that the that the advise subcommittee wants to hear from re attend remotely. It's really just when you open it up to the general public that we have concerns about whether or not we can staff sure the flow of people in and out. Um, so, I agree, but I but but I would defer to the folks that are here on this subcommittee as to whether who they want to hear from and, and what they want to hear. Meg, Jim, I... Meg, thoughts, comments? 
Um, and then we can and then we'll move on. I'd, I'd like to bring one or two experts in to talk about patient-centered programs that have been successful in other states and try to see what they're doing as far as, you know, grower, cultivator, home grow to patient ratios, numbers of plants, uh, just try to learn a little bit more and maybe share that learning with everybody else. I, I think okay. having one expert perhaps, um, just knowing that we are so limited in time and if we're going to have a representative from a dispensary on Thursday as well, maybe limiting uh, the patient representatives to just one. Okay. Okay. Sounds fair. Meg, you know, if you don't mind me jumping in, I apologize. Um, you know, one thing that I have committed to as the chair of this board is um, maintaining continuity of services to the patients. And to me, what would be very important, I think it was spoken about, um, you know, Jim, I think you mentioned it at an early subcommittee meeting is trying our best to put together a list of the products that yep. people are purchasing from the dispensaries because at a bare minimum you know i need to make sure that those products are still on the shelves in sufficient numbers for the patients um, when this transition happens so Absolutely. it's just a point that i didn't i didn't want to lose before you know public comment but um that, that to me it would be a very important um yeah. document yep. for this this committee and jim just so you know that, that we, we mentioned that Last, I mean, that's what I'm, I'm referring to the right. base, baseline of products. Um, okay. Yep. And that, that's why we are having uh, the dispensary representative. Uh, and and you know, Jim and, and Meg are, are working with them on that, on that list. Yep. All right. Thank, thank you. All right. I appreciate you guys uh, going down that rabbit hole with me. All right. And then, so let's see. Next, I think we're basically down to assigning tasks and public comment. Because we well, sort of covered all the other goodies. Let, 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 let me, because I, I, I did want to put that. Um, Jim and Meg, as far as that, that baseline is is concerned, have you had additional conversations or information yeah. gathering to, to kind of advance that at all? Or, or are we going to kind of work through that with the dispensary representative? So we will submit that. Um, the dispensaries are working on kind of a letter just Oh, line okay. commitment as well as that baseline and then we'll make sure to get that in before Thursday's meeting okay and and who will be there attending my uh, I will need to reach out I believe it will be Shane Lynn okay all right um, he, it, our, and since they will be allowed to um, attend virtually I take it yes okay great and Doctor, you'll um, you can email us who you have for Thursday's meeting as well from the patient group. Okay. You bet. All right, and then we'll we'll, we'll set the agenda based on those two presentations. Okay. Is there anything else we need to put on Thursday's agenda? Um, I mean, if we can, I'd still like to work down our our list before we start to assign the drafting tasks. Okay. I mean, we Tom, just- I'm hoping, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say we have on the list home grow possession and, uh, um, and, uh, and uh, I, th I thought, uh, and caregivers, which I, so I feel like we had pretty much gone through those with this conversation. And then the next thing we have is assigning tasks and public comment. So I don't think that, so I think we're good on the agenda. Well, what I will have, uh, as we discussed in the, the Thursday's meeting, uh, the oversight committee is meeting on Wednesday and I'm hoping, you know, if things go well, we will have a draft document that'll be in the, you know, public comment period. Either way, whether it's ready for that, I can, I'll share it uh, before Thursday. This is gonna be the rec rec recommendation that uh, the oversight committee is giving to the CCB uh, about the makeup and mechanism of uh, future uh, cannabis for symptom relief oversight committee. Perfect. 
Are we, we ready then for, I'm sorry, Tom? Go, go ahead. I was just Are we to ready add. for public comment then? We don't have anyone here in the room who's, uh, who's here to give public comment today. All right. So then it looks like we're ready to adjourn. I'm ready. Motion, motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second is <laughs> third. Like. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We'll see you on Thank Thursday. You. Okay. See you Thursday. Bye. Bye.